Testing. Well, welcome everyone. So glad that you're here tonight on this Wednesday evening. Great to see some faces we don't see as often. Welcome you on YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, we are starting a, a new series and it's on the power and the names of Jesus. So uh, very exciting, uh, really excited about the name that we're going to learn about today. And uh, so again, thank you so much. Uh, we, I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we will start some music. Father God, we just love you so much, Lord, and we just thank you so much, Father. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending your Son to us, Father. And Father, I would just pray that you would just help us to truly grow even deeper in your word uh, during this series, Father. And Father, I just pray your hand upon this church and in this room tonight, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would have his way, Father. And Father, we pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I was thinking about this morning when I was going through some of these courses and I thought about this one right here, how that I had a debt that I could never pay. It was just virtually impossible. But Jesus Christ said, I'll take that debt. I don't know it, but I'll pay it. And that's what this chorus says. He paid a debt, did not owe, I owe a debt. I need it. 
love that song. Um, for those of you that uh, online or in the audience that may uh, came a little late, just uh, we are starting a new series and it's on the power and the names of Jesus. Uh, excited about this? I know many of us have probably read or studied the names of God, the Hebrew names of God. Uh, but this study will actually be on some of the names that Jesus was called. So I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, okay, thanks so much for worship. Love that. And uh, uh, just let me go ahead and mention a few announcements before we get started in the study. And uh, so we got a really cool youth camping trip coming up uh, June 14th through the 17th. So uh, those of you with youth uh, and have your, your kiddos, invite kiddos and uh, see Michelle, of course, and uh, I'm sure that'll be a fun trip. Uh, and then also, and this is really neat, uh, we have a guest speaker, Pastor Dave Beach. Many of us know him. He's a, a, a pastor in Tempe. I actually knew him years ago when he was the youth pastor at Red Mountain Christian Center. And, uh, but he is going to be our guest speaker at the Father and Son Prayer Breakfast. So, and I hear pretty cool things about the food. Uh, you don't want to be on a diet, though. So these guys are serious about the meat. So anyhow, bring an appetite. That'll be fun. And then Ladies Bunko uh, is in Ladies Love It, June 18th. I hear a hoop hoop, and it's uh, at 6.30. Uh, just come, it's fun, and if you have never played Bunko, you'll learn how to do it in what, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes? Uh, what amazes me is these women can actually talk while they're shaking and doing the counting and all this, and it's like, oh, 
But anyhow, it is a lot of fun. I've played, played it quite a bit. So, uh, and then, oh yes, and then one of the things is uh, Family Life Ministries will be starting a summer devotional for your family. So see Michelle Smet for more details on that as well. Great. Okay. Um, well, tonight we are going to talk about Emmanuel, and I'm excited about that uh, because, and it's very appropriate, because the prophet Isaiah announced, and we read this in Isaiah uh, 7.14, that the promised Messiah of God would come and be called Emmanuel. And uh, Emmanuel in Hebrew means God with us. So there are handouts. If you didn't get one, they're on the, on the, the uh, table back there. So number one, uh, the Emmanuel's name was given to Jesus. This name is encouraging to us because in Hebrew it means God with us. We also read in Matthew 123 where it is said that, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, I don't know about you, but God with us. So not only that, but God is in us. You know, that should make us pretty darn excited. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And uh, so God is in you. He's in me through the, ho the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, it's important to note that God is with us no matter what. And I know many, we all probably know the scripture that never will I leave you nor forsake you. And... Um, you know, so whether you're going through a financial struggle, a health crisis, a relationship issue, uh, you know, the truth is you could be going through, you may have had persecution or just grief, suffering. We all do uh, from Ohio. So kind of one of those sayings is life isn't always peaches and cream, is it? And uh, so it should give us comfort in knowing that God is with us regardless of what we're going through. And uh, I just couldn't imagine doing life without God. I don't know about you. And so the incarnation was a supernatural event. And uh, so number two, uh, what it was, was it was deity being poured into humanity. Wow. Uh, so, can we really fully grasp the Incarnation? God, the Holy Spirit, fertilized the egg of the Virgin Mary so that the person or man, Jesus Christ, would be born on this earth. You know, Isaiah tells us that this Emmanuel, uh, God with us, is a mighty counselor. Now, you know, life can be tough. There's times we need counsel. We need counsel of others. We need certainly need to hear uh, from the Holy Spirit. At times we need direction. Sometimes we, we have, you know, difficult decisions that we're, we're facing. So it's good to know that, that Emmanuel, God with us, is a mighty counselor. You know, Isaiah also says that this Emmanuel is mighty God. So mighty God, that means that we have all of the access of the power of God right inside of us. Wow. He's the everlasting father. Okay. So how long is everlasting? forever and ever and ever, right? Well, our Father is everlasting. Remember, never will he leave you nor forsake you. In spite of how you may feel, and that's where we have to align our thoughts with the truth of God's word, not our feelings. 
feelings are up and down and up and down and all over the place. Uh, Isaiah also calls him the Prince of Peace. So this means that when we have access to Jesus, he brings order out of chaos. He brings peace. You know, what I like about that is, you know, when we do have difficult decisions to make, or maybe, you know, we have a choice in decisions. I, I learned long ago, follow the peace. So if you're thinking about doing something or you're making a very important decision, analyze it. Is it, do I really feel peaceful about this? Do I have what we call the witness of the spirit on this? And that's important. Uh, and so when you find that, and I learned long ago, that if it is an important decision and you don't have peace, don't rush. Take your time. There's no hurry. See, the enemy wants to come in and make, us make rash decisions and do something real quick. And then maybe, you know, make not such a, a great choice. Uh, so I love that. The Prince of Peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. So to have God with us is to have the deity available to every woman and every man who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Wow. And... Uh, so this should totally excite us, right? Because this means that we have the incarnation inside of us. We have the supernatural inside of us, the natural. So the incarnation was God becoming man or God revealed in human flesh through Jesus Christ. There's a theological term for this, which is called the hypostatic union. Never heard of this was I learned something new here. And what that is, it's a combination of the divine and the human natures in a single person. So two distinctively different natures in one man. So Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man. And uh, I want to go through a few scriptures that kind of show that a little more clear. Isaiah 9, 6 says this, A child will be born to us, that's Jesus, on the earth, but a son will be given to us by God. So Jesus already existed in the heavens, but he came to earth through human birth. Wow. Now only God could think of something like that, right? <laughs> and another example we see is in Galatians 4.4. 4. When the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So it shows you both of those situations. So Jesus already existed, but he came to earth through human birth. So what is this baby born in a manger like? Well, we see in Colossians 1.15, it says this, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So Jesus has the image of God. You see Jesus, you see God. In Hebrews 1.3, it says this, he is the exact representation of God. So that would be number three on your hand, handout, that Jesus is the exact represent, representation of God. And I, I love this because you know, uh, the scripture that says that Jesus from, that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of us. So when we're talking about Jesus, Emmanuel, we are talking about God himself. This is God in the flesh. You know, and by faith in Jesus, God and man are brought together. 
So if you belong to Jesus Christ, you're walking around with God in the midst of you through the Holy Spirit. So think about that. The supernatural, the all-powerful, almighty God is living on the inside of each of us. And I know I'm kind of repeating a lot of these themes because I don't know about you, but it's hard to grasp the fullness of this. And so, uh, but this is what we have. Almighty God living on the inside of us. That's the Holy Spirit. So I say, why don't we spend more time rather than dwelling on what the devil is doing in our life, bragging about what God has done, right? More time on that. And I love this scripture. I didn't put the reference, but it just, this totally reminds me of the scripture that says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living on the inside of us. Mm, that's a lot of power, right? That's what the Bible says. And then I'm reminded of another scripture where Jesus says, you will great, do greater works than I do because I sit at the right hand of the Father and intercede. Wow. All right. So how did we get separated from God? You know, would you like to guess? Three letter, uh, a three-letter word, yes. And that's uh, number four on your handout. You know, in Isaiah 59.2, it says this, Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Hmm. So we see that when sin was introduced into the world, it caused a separation between us and God. You know, that was not his intention. So we go all the way back to Adam and Eve, right? It, this destroyed man's relationship with God. Aren't we glad that, that God had another plan and he didn't give up on us, right? Mm. So how do we become reconciled back to God? Well, number five, it's through Jesus. Jesus is the bridge that restores our relationship back to God. And we see that in John 14, 6. You cannot skip Jesus and have God. Doesn't work that way. You can't deny Jesus and have God. No. You, uh, Jesus is the only begotten Son, the only one. Jesus is God with us. He is Emmanuel. And so I'll read John 14, 6. And this is where Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I love that scripture. You want to have a nugget? You know, you're evangelizing. You want to tell someone about Jesus? This is a very important scripture because it shows clearly how we are reconciled to God and how we can know that we'll have eternal life through this scripture. Matter of fact, what I like about this scripture is it dispels false religions or cults. You want to know if a religion is from God, if it's truth, Study what they believe about Jesus, and that'll tell you a lot right there. And uh, so it, that's a clear thing, is to see what they believe in Jesus. So when you come to Christ, you have the incarnation operating inside of you, inside of your, in your world, and in your life. Then I'm going to repeat it. The supernatural has entered the natural. So what does God expect from us? You know, the Bible says that we are Christians. We are made in his image, right? You know, I like what Tony Evans uh, says. And a, a lot of the material um, I took from several sources, of course, the Bible. But uh, Tony Evans has, a, on the Right Now Media, if you have access to that, 
he has a teaching on the power and the names of Jesus. It's pretty exciting because it, it takes place in Israel, so it's way cool, in Jerusalem. And uh, here's what he says about um, Jesus. He says that Jesus is God's selfie. <laughs> you know, when you take it, uh. <laughs> and, uh, excuse me, I don't know why I'm so thirsty. I ate something. Normally I'm not, but I ate something before coming that isn't a green. So. so he says Jesus is God's selfie, ah, you know? And uh, so God wanted man to know what he was like. In other words, man could see God in human form by looking to Jesus. And uh, I love this, and this shows this clearly. And this is in John 14, 8 through 10. There was a dialogue between Philip and Jesus. And Philip says to the Lord, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. So here they are. They've been walking and talking to Jesus himself, seeing miracles, and they say, show us the Father. Well, Here's how Jesus responds, and honestly, I think he probably had kind of an indignant tone to his voice. He says this, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? In other words, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. So you see God, you see Jesus. Exact representation, okay? So when we see, and that's where I said, so when you see Jesus, you see the Father. You know, the truth is and that Jesus coming to earth as a man fully experienced the effects of a fallen world. I couldn't imagine what that would have been like. But he understands our pain and sorrow and grief. And, uh, you know, he was tempted just like we are. And uh, he needs strength. He, he got weary. He needed to pull away. He saw the wickedness in the world. I mean, look how many times he contended with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. And so he needed food. He needed rest. And he needed strengthened. You know, I like, I was just reading in the, the Bible, uh, where uh, when Jesus started his ministry. And remember, the, the, the Satan took him out to tempt him, you know, and, and of, of course he would, he would say this, you know, to Jesus, and Jesus would respond. And, uh, you know, it is interesting that Satan does know God's word quite well. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, at the end of that, because he was on a 40-day fast, but at the end of that test, before he started his ministry, we read where then the angels were brought to him to minister to him, because he needed ministry. You know, there's times we need ministry, right? There's times uh, we need an angel to come and help us, don't we? And uh, so Jesus came that we may know God more fully and experience his power as he deals with our sins and circumstances. Because we know that does happen here, doesn't it? And uh, so why is this good news? Well, it's good news because I know that there are some that struggle to believe that God loves them. They do, they struggle with it. Uh, and they, they believe often that God is mad at them. And, um, you know, that's just their life. And, and again, and I've mentioned this before, often it has to do with 
how they were uh, handled or cared for as a child. And uh, so this is really good news. If you had a difficulty childhood, you struggle to believe that you just simply cannot measure up. You know, the good news is I want to tell you that that is not our God. Now, does he convict us? Well, sure, yeah. Do we blow it? And does he chastise us sometimes? Yes, the word says he does. But generally speaking, if you really are under that oppression of believing that you just can't measure up and that you're just a, you're a disappointment to the Father, the good news is that is not the voice that you're hearing is probably the enemy or, our, or your own, the own weakness. You know, we can have those thoughts about ourselves, And uh, so that's the good news. The power and purpose of the incarnation is that God becomes experientially real to you, to me, through the person of Jesus, Emmanuel. You know, he wants a relationship. He wants a relationship with his children. He wants to spend time with his children. And um, the Bible says also that we are called to reflect his character, his will, and attributes in our daily lives. Um, and we read that in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1, it says, be imitators of me just as I am also uh, in, of Christ. So we're to be imitators. We know that we're to be the salt and the light, right? And um, so I, you know, that's called sanctification. It's, we're all in a process, we're all in, in, in you know, different uh, levels, depending on how long we've been Christians probably, or, and that is perfectly okay, uh, but he loves us, he's for us, he's, he's not against us, but he wants to see us truly become free, free of the lies of the enemy. Pastor always calls it the hissing in your ear. He wants us free. He wants to see his children free. He wants to see his children living in victory. And uh, it takes work. Yes, it does. It takes time. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, it doesn't come by osmosis. You know, you think of a, someone that's uh, a sports person. If they really want to fine tune and become good at that sport, let's say a pitcher, a baseball, he has to practice and practice and practice and spend time, time, time. He has to start imagining it, right? Well, Christians, we need to spend time in the Word, time in prayer, just quiet time with the Lord. And, and when He's dealing with us, be obedient, trust Him, uh, just trust Him. And, and I like to declare the Word. A lot of times when I pray, I pray Scripture. You know, I kind of put someone's name or my name, and I just, that's kind of a style that I, I, I like. But so let's be imitators of Jesus, right? Um, you know, we've got a, a big building over there, and we've got a community that is needing Jesus is needing the love of Christ in their life, uh, needing uh, to be here under worship, listening to scriptures, listening to sermons, and growing, and allowing that sanctification in their own life. And um, so this week, I'd like to uh, just have us uh, have a life, I call it a life exercise. Let's spend time really getting intimate with Jesus. First, that starts with an evaluation. Evaluate your relationship with Jesus. Has it kind of grown cold, stale? Are you just under oppression thinking that he's just disappointed with you? Uh, or you blew it too many times, he'd never take you back? You know, those are just lies of the enemy. And then the purpose to spend more time with him this week. Get into the word. Strengthen yourself. 
you know, I'm reminded of the scripture that we build ourselves up in our most holy faith. There's times where I have to do more of what I would normally do, right? To be strengthened. Because what I normally do isn't working. The enemy is really trying to get an upper hand on me. And uh, so I want to encourage us with that. Uh, this one was, I, I don't know, maybe you didn't think it was difficult, but I think the incarnation is hard to grasp. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. I do. I enjoyed the study. Um, we've got some really, really cool words that we're going to be studying, names about Jesus in the next several weeks. So uh, just hope to have you uh, back and listening. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, Close us in, in prayer, and then uh, we'll shut off the the, the mic there. Uh, and then we are we have some time for prayer tonight, so I'm excited about that. And uh, so, Father, we just love you so much. And Lord, just realizing the truth of what you did for us, Lord, how you sent your Son here on earth to die for us so that we may live. Lord, help us to, as we go through these names, Father, some powerful names of Jesus, may we really grasp what Jesus did for us. And Father, it would be my prayer that, that for each and every one of us, if we're stuck we just can't seem to get ahead in some areas, Lord. Father, encourage people with your word. I would pray for divine revelation to your people. I pray that you will guide them to a scripture that will just touch their soul and their minds. And that you would encourage them during this time, Father. And Father, we just thank you so much. And we pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, uh, goodbye, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you on Sunday. Powerful time in the Lord. See you then. Bye.